Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Okay, so today uh, we're going to talk a little bit about grinding. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I've ground a whole bunch of knives. I mean, really, I have. And, you know, I mean, I, I've kind of gone through different steps over, or different processes over the years, you know, in, um, you know, how I like to grind knives. Um, you know, there was a, a phase where I, I ground everything wet. There was a phase where I, well, actually, to, to start with, there was that whole phase of that first couple of years where I really didn't know what the heck I was doing. I mean, I, I know I was taking, you know, a blade and sticking it up against a belt and removing material, but honestly, there was not really any rhyme or reason in, you know, whether one knife came out great and the other knife came out not so great. You know, and that, you, you know... When, when folks come over to the shop and they want to learn how to make knives and you know their first knife ends up looking not quite like what they envisioned I tell them I say hey listen you know my first couple of hundred knives looked like a third grader did it in fact maybe a third grader might have done a better job because they learn faster you know um, you know and, and not to be discouraged with that first couple of hundred knives. Well, then they hear a hundred knives and they're like, man, that's an awful lot of grinding. It is, and it is. You know, any skill that you want to do with your hands, the more you practice, you know, the better you get. And that first, I mean, that first couple of hundred are just going to, you know, not be as good as, you know, afterwards. I mean, just think about when you learned how to ride a bike, how many times you fell down before, you know, you finally got the hang of it. And then once you got the, the hang of it, how many more times you fell down until you know you could you know ride well without falling down at all so knife grinding is kind of the same deal and it looks like I've just made it through um, you know the the next step in, in my grinding you know as a knife maker and I mean not to say that you know I, I couldn't grind before but um, but I found something that's for me right now a little bit better it's it's the next step in my grinding evolution and that comes from Tim Hancock and um, his blade grinding video here uh, you can get it from um, uh, the American Bladesmith Society and that's the cover um, here's the website AmericanBladesmith.com Hopefully that'll focus for you a little bit. <clears throat> um, so what led me up to this this particular grinding method? Um, you know, I mean, I've been freehand grinding pretty much my entire career. And, you know, I mean, I keep getting, you know, better at it and better at it. Up until the last, oh, probably a year or two. And, um, you know, I found that uh, I just can't... I remember back in the old shop. I'd come out to the, the shop in the morning with a cup of coffee and then, you know, drink half that cup of coffee, go over, step up to a belt grinder, flip the on switch, and I would grind until lunchtime. You know, I mean, besides coffee and cigarette breaks, you know, because I smoked at the time, um, you know, but I'd grind all the way through till lunchtime, have lunch, come back out, light up that grinder, and then grind until it was time to quit for the day if that's what I needed to do, you know, for, for work that day. The last couple of years, it sure seems like I can only step up to that grinder and I can only grind for maybe an hour, maybe two hours, depends on how much I've been grinding, and then my grinds start kind of, you know, they start fighting me too much. Um, I was talking to a buddy of mine about this. Uh, his name's James Rodebaugh. He's another uh, phenomenal knife maker. I mean, some of the stuff that he puts out, you're like, oh my God, that was made by human hands. And he was telling me, he's like, Joe, you know, you might be getting a little bit older. You might be, you know, a little bit less steady. You know, you might just be in a slump. But here's the style of grinding that, that worked for me when he went through the same phase. And that's uh, Tim Hancock's method of grinding. And we'll, uh, we'll go in and I'll kind of go over it with you a little bit here in a second. And pretty much... Um, I think what it is, is it, it comes down to your stance in front of the grinder. Um, but anyway, so, so I'm about uh, 60, 70, 80 knives in, you know, grinding with this method. 
And boy, let me tell you, the more I grind with this method, the more I am really enjoying it. And I think we'll probably just go back to the, the grinding room and I'll kind of walk you through everything. Um, we're not going to light the grinders up today. Honestly, I, I'm kind of out of anything to grind. But um, if you've ever ground knife before, um, you'll, you'll be able to follow through the steps and I think you'll be able to see the, the advantages uh, of this method. <coughs> so... Let's go in here to the grinding room. I think this is a good spot for you, at least it has been in the past. Make sure you can see what... Okay, um, we need a, a junk knife. If you guys don't have a bucket to throw your, your junk knives in, in your grinding room, get one because a lot of times the temptation will be as you're grinding you know you might uh, you know you might overheat a section of it or something like that or you might uh, really wreck your your plunge lines I mean so much that you can't fix it or it's not really reasonable to, to fix it or you know you just screw up right if you have yourself a grinding bucket or a, a trash bucket that's mine right there. It's one of them popcorn tins from uh, from Christmas time. Uh, we'll grab another one right quick. You know, let's say you're grinding and you screw it up. The temptation will be, you know, to set that to the side and, and try to fix it later. And honestly, you'll spend way more time than it's worth on that. So if you you have one, and you start grinding and you overheat the tip or you you know uh, screw up the plunge line or something like that make sure that trash bucket is handy so you can go ah oh, shit and throw it in there preferably metal and that way it's over and done with you can go ahead and go on to the next knife okay so we got two different size blades here so my old method of grinding was uh, what I've learned, I've come to find what everybody calls it, is called belly grinding, okay? You stand here, actually I probably might want to bring it back some more, because I want you to see my body position here while I'm grinding, okay? So you stand here, you hold the blade, and you know, in, in both hands, and you present it to the belt, okay? Now obviously you be, have all your safety gear and everything. And you just grind the thing, right? So pretty much you're just putting your belly up against the, the belt grinder, you know, and using that to kind of steady your blade out, which is why they call it belly grinding. Now, when, as you get older and your belly gets bigger, that actually helps quite a bit because you've got more, uh, you know, more there to support your hands as you're grinding. There's a couple of, now the, don't get me wrong, I, I really... Um, you know, the skills that you learn freehand grinding, belly grinding like this, they really come in handy, okay? So sometimes you might want to do some really crazy grind, you know, where the, the tip is really, really thick and, you know, it's, it's thinner down around the ricasso, or you're, you're grinding a sword and you need to grind it in sections, or if you want to put like a, a really severe, um, you know, angled plunge line or something like that. Being able to freehand grind is is really cool to be able to do that. The problem for me comes in is that when you're grinding here, you're pushing on this belt. Okay, you're pushing on the blade and then the blade is pushing on the belt. Well, you're pushing from a stance that has no support to push from. Okay, now you want to get your hips as close up under your work as possible to hold it up. But what happens is, is like I said, you're, you're sitting here and you're pushing, but you've got no, I mean, you're good side to side and you're good up and down, but you've got no forward and back leverage. Okay, you're just standing here. And I think that's kind of what gets to your, your back, your your lower back, I mean pretty much everything. I mean after about an hour of standing here and trying to push from no support it just falls apart. So um, Tim Hancock's method is you use a work rest. Okay? Now I think I'm going to redo this work rest here pretty soon and make uh, uh, you know go ahead and uh, 
you know, make one that kind of goes in and out and not so much, you know, a, a rotating type one like this. Now here's the deal. Well, first, first let me explain the teeter-totter, okay? When you're grinding blades, now you can kind of come up here. Well, no, you can just come up. When you're grinding blades, you've got several, uh, you can call them teeter-totters here. I think uh, I got that from Harvey Dean's um, uh, flat grinding video. Okay, so you can rotate the, or, you know, uh, pivot the blade this way, okay? You can pivot it this way, and you can pivot it this way, okay? So you control that with your, your thumb pressure on the tang and then your support hand also, okay? So you, you know, you put more pressure up here towards the edge, and of course there's more pressure there, and it'll grind more towards the edge. Put the blade, your thumb in the center, and it will grind pretty much in the center, or follow whatever kind of grind you already have going on. You put it at the back, and it will grind closer to the spine. All right, and then this portion right here, um, pretty much you want to keep it... Um, the tip angled kind of away from the offside, otherwise you'll get what's called a, a two inch divot where the belt will just grind straight in and you'll wind up with a divot here that you'll have to work out later. Okay, so now that we got the teeter-totters and everything out of the way, now you bring up your your work rest. Okay, now all the work rest does is support your blade in the same position relative to the belt on both sides and over and over and over again, okay? I've had, I've tried jigs, you know, I mean, I've tried, I don't know how many times, you know, or days that I've spent, you know, trying to build different jigs and everything, and honestly, they, they're just not clicking with me, right? This does, because what this does is it gives you all the freedom that you would normally have in freehand belly grinding, only with a supported work rest so that when you're grinding here this is supporting you or supporting your workpiece right which means that you no longer have to have your hips directly below you know your hands because the work rest is supporting your work your hips don't have to support your work anymore now what you can do is take a half a step back with your offside you know, your, your offside foot. Now guess what? Now you are pushing from, you know, a strong stance. Now, when you're grinding, you don't really push a whole lot, but you push a little for hours, okay? Now, if you're just grinding one or two blades or something like that, maybe this isn't such a big deal. This last batch that I'm working on, I think there's two dozen of them in there, something like that. Now the reason this batch is so big is because I, I wanted to practice this grinding method. And I figured a couple of dozen knives would be, you know, a good way to practice. <clears throat> that way you get into it and you're practicing each step for a good amount of time so that you can, you know, finish your technique. <clears throat> so, but now that you can get that foot back a little bit, and now you're pushing off of that foot in the back. Now, even though you're not pushing a whole lot, now you're pushing from a position of strength and you can push for a long, long, long time. Okay? This method right here, the first dozen knives honestly were trash and I threw them away. Once it the my body kind of started getting the, the hang of it, now I can stand in front of this grinder again and I can grind for two, three, four hours if I need to. And the grinds at the end of that are comparable to the grinds at the beginning of that time frame. Okay, so um, as you know, you tire from standing here in front of the belt grinder, this support allows you to keep doing good work. All right. Um, one of the big reasons that Tim Hancock said that he, in his video, that he developed this method is because he's uh, he had Parkinson's. And so, I'm not completely familiar with Parkinson's, but uh, apparently that has a, an awful lot to do with how shaky your hands are, how much control you have over your, your body and your hands and everything. This one addition of a work rest help, helped him do high-level work even with, you know, 
uh, hands that had, uh, you know, something he had to work around. Okay, <clears throat> now, y'all see there's a push stick, okay? Now, this one um, is made out of a piece of an old cutting board, so a piece of HDPE. Uh, it grinds real easy. Um, it's nice and light. Um, it doesn't mar up the, the other side of your blade when you're grinding. And it has an added benefit of, if you look this up on um, your melting points, HDPE uh, melts at somewhere around 288 degrees. So, if you're grinding and all of a sudden you start seeing streaks on your blade because you're melting this, then that means that you're probably a little on the hot side. Maybe even too much on the hot side. Um, and you will. You'll, you'll, get, you'll streak this way before you'll change color on your, your edge, which is a handy thing to think about when you're um, you know, trying to grind and trying to grind cool. <clears throat> now, remember the teeter-totter that I was telling you about, right? And your thumb pressure on your tang, okay? Well, now you've got the same thing in this push stick, okay? You could go ahead and just fingertip it and then grind the whole time. But with that push stick, now you put that push stick on there and you can, you know, put your thumb pressure at the top, in the middle, in the bottom. Now you've got two points of contact where you can use your thumbs to really dial in where the pressure is going on that blade. Pretty amazing, right? Now, um, and if that isn't enough, if you're one of the guys that just grinds, you know, three, four inch uh, EDCs, hunters, stuff like that, this is something that you really won't notice a whole lot of. When I'm grinding thinner or narrower blades like this, I use the other end. Okay, so this end is for grinding, you know, big chef's knives and stuff, right? This side right here, you turn it sideways and it's for grinding smaller blades. Now you can really put that pressure where you want it. Smaller blades don't tend to flex around the belt, okay? So when you put pressure on your thumb, here, that pressure is going to translate towards, you know, the tip a whole lot more readily. When you start grinding, now this is just a five inch um, uh, a chef's knife type, so it's really not all that bad, but see how much more flex there is in that blade? When you're starting to grind chef's knives or fillet knives, boning knives, things like that, the blade tends to flex just about the same time that you get enough pressure to get the belt to cut. So we come up with grinding sticks, which uh, I've showed you the grinding sticks before, where you have a stick and you have a couple of nails in here, and then that supports the blade, and then you put the whole thing up there, and that stick provides backing so that that blade, your pressure is all the way on there, so that the blade doesn't wrap around the platen. This way works just as good, because now you control where that pressure is. See what I mean? So now you're not putting, you're not pushing here and here. This hand is just moving the blade back and forth, and you're putting your pressure here. Okay, which means that now you've got so much more control over the amount of pressure and where the pressure is that you really don't need grinding sticks anymore. Um, yeah, it's just, <coughs> it's just amazing. <clears throat> now, um, these are both, well, no, we'll keep those with us. <clears throat> um, okay, so the next thing is, uh, Tim uses a disc an awful lot. I have never been a disc fan, okay? I've got the disc right there on the, the little 4x36. I use that, honestly, for squaring up, like, the faces of uh, a hidden tang, uh, uh, handle block, um, and for setting, uh, <coughs> Uh, the angles on um, uh, the lock bars on like liner locks and stuff, but I don't really use it for blade grinding. I have had this disc for quite a while. It's just a nine inch aluminum disc, and I had it on a, a, a one horse 1750 RPM motor, just a straight up uh, 120 single phase motor. And honestly, I didn't use it a whole lot. Um, Honestly, it went too fast. Uh, this thing right here with the variable speed and, uh, so this is a, a, a 240 volt motor, three phase, um, 
that I run off of a VFD. The same one that I, I built for my uh, horizontal belt grinder. <clears throat> and I'll show you that in another video. But <clears throat> So I added a reversing switch. So now this grinder will run uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, and in uh, you know variable speed. So now it's running counterclockwise. We can speed it up. We can slow it down. The reversing switch has got a stop feature in it. And then it goes the other way. Slow down, go fast. Okay, so the reason that I hated the disc for so long is because, um, you know, you would buy the sticky um, pre-made discs, and they're expensive. And that, uh, that adhesive always gets stuck to the plate. Or to your... Uh, always gets stuck to your disc and you know you put it on there you you know you do a, a 10 minute job and then you spend 30 minutes cleaning all that stuff off of there well this stuff right here this 3m feathering adhesive you put this on the the plate and then you can get five six uh, disc changes before you need to clean this off and then reapply it <clears throat> and even then it comes off in just a you know a couple of seconds with wd-40 and then I use denatured alcohol, um, you know, to, to clean the WD-40 off and then go back again. So this thing right here, so you grind, uh, the way I did this last batch was you grind, um, you do your rough grinds with 36 grit belts, okay? Uh, well, first you cut your, cut your 90s in you know, on a piece of just, you know, a, an unground blank. Cut your 90s in with an old belt. Switch to a new belt. Go ahead, grind your bevels. Check them with a micrometer. Make sure that, you know, your grind lines are even and everything, or as much as you can. Go to a 60 um, to kind of clean things up, but kind of stay out of the plunge lines a little bit. Then go to a, 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 a 220 um, gator belt clean up your plunge lines then you can come out to here put a 120 piece of paper on this disc and then when you go to grind this because discs are really good at getting things flat now you are grinding on this huge piece of you know this huge flat area you will definitely see any dips any waves anything like that in your grinding from your belt grinder then you can make the choice, go back to the belt grinder to, to fix those waves or get them a little bit closer, or just work them out on the 120 on the disc. Um, you know, one side, then the other. Or if you're lazy, you know, grind up, grind down, you know, either way. 120 on the disc, then go to 220 on the disc, 320 on the disc, and then go to your hand sanding. This disc really kind of helps even out any overgrinds that you might have had, um, uh, you know, on the belt grinder. So like um, when I used to just belly grind, I'd have an awful lot right up in here would be overground, where that's where I would present to the belt first because you don't want to present at the tip. So you try to you know, present here, and then present here, and then present here, and then that way, because every time you present that knife to the belt, you get a little bit of a wobble. And it'll tend to, you'll spend an extra half a second on there until the blade settles down, and then you can go ahead and start your grind. This really smooths that out. Um, with the work rest and everything, that wobble, when you hit, isn't near as, um, it isn't as bad, because it's already supported. So you place the blade on the work rest, kind of get it up a little bit close, and then you can tap it in and there's not near as much of a wobble so you don't get as much of an overgrind. But <clears throat> the overgrinds that you do get, the disc fixes way easier. And boy, let me tell you, these sheets of sandpaper, even getting the nice stuff, um, the Rhino Wet, no, that's not it. This Rhino Wet stuff, I just ordered like 150 sheets of it, and it came out to be like 60 cents a sheet for, you know, this really good sandpaper. 
whereas a you know a 320 grit whereas a 320 grit belt for the 2x72 will run you about you know five or six bucks and honestly I think the paper here lasts longer than the belts there because here you can control your speed so much um, yeah you run them slower and it seems like they last a little bit longer <coughs> Yeah, so I think uh, we'll take you back over here. So yeah, I mean, so without you know going through and and you know basically replicating this video only with my face instead of Tim's, which you know I don't I don't really want to do that. Um, that kind of gives you an overview about how this grinding method works and. Like I said, the more I'm grinding with it, the more I'm thinking, man, I should have, honestly, almost, <clears throat> half of me says I wish I would have learned how to grind with this method, you know, 10, 15 years ago when I started making knives. And the other half of me is kind of glad that I didn't because now I have the freehand skills, you know, that I can step up to a grinder and freehand grind a blade, or I can grind with this method. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's well worth it. And I want to say this video was... 20 or 30 dollars and I think the ABS charges four dollars in shipping or maybe eight dollars something like that um, it is a little bit tough to understand <clears throat> they definitely needed a different mic um, you know on Tim uh, so when you watch this video you really have to kind of concentrate and pay attention to, to be able to understand what he's saying or at least I do but you know, he's also showing you what he's doing as he's doing it. And, you know, the, the second you see what his hands are doing, you know, if you've spent any time blade grinding it at all, it'll be, it'll be, oh, well, that's what he's, he's saying, even if you can't understand what he's saying. So anyway, excellent video. Um, <clears throat> if you, uh, if you don't have the, you know, the, the, the money to be able to purchase it, um, on Nick Wheeler's uh, YouTube channel, he has got, um, it, it's not the same time, but uh, Tim was doing a demonstration in a different shop, and Nick Wheeler videoed it and then put it on his YouTube channel. I think it's a, it's a three or a four part series um, where he goes over an awful lot of the information that's in here. I think this has got a little bit more in it, though, um, but, you know, wa watch them both if you can um, yeah. So again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you give this style of blade grinding a try. If you do and you like it or you hate it, post it down in the comments and, um, you know, maybe we'll all be better grinders. So again, uh, hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you next time.